Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we are here for the mayhem. It is a Wednesday night. It is post-AEW. I've watched literally half of the three-hour AEW because I had a client come in at 9 o'clock. And yes, and they were almost on the podcast. They were very excited, but they have watched zero wrestling. So I don't know how that would have went. So who knows? Anyways, I am here. First of all, joining me is Riz Plays Games on the Twitch. It's the Riz. It's me. It's you. It's not Tuesday. I'm I'm going to be confused it's next you. week. You're going to wake up the morning and be like, oh, Thursday like today's things. Today's Wednesday, right? Thursday things. Thursday no, night Thursday. fights day. That's the thing that will kick it off when you start seeing all those promotions from all the students. Yes. That's it. That's it. And, of course, you know, it's 11 p.m. on the East Coast here. Do you even know? My body doesn't know it because I landed at 11.45 last night from L.A., uh, so we, we, you know, we, we're just, you bring some people in there. It's lunchtime for them. Or I don't know how time works. Tina Keys is with us from up in Seattle. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome. And, and of course, I think it's a perfect time to have you on with all the swerveness happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. What? <laughs> You've watched you've watched Swerve grow up, I'm sure. So actually, people are reminding me because um, in the catalog we do have a uh, license for the VOW Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and I think there might be a few things in the IWC catalog of of Strickland here in the Pittsburgh area as well. Over yeah, there. so that would that would fall underneath that umbrella because I, at least how I got it, how I, I got um, exposed to Swerve was his time in um, CCW actually. Mm-hmm. So. There you go. So Swerve has been all over the place. Uh, we've all ran into him. We were like, I don't know about this guy. And then turns out later he's the champion. So, But no, it, it's been really great. I even booted up Fight Forever and uh, played a little Swerve uh, uh, action on there. Unfortunately, my thing doesn't auto-download stuff. So I didn't even have like Claudio and, and Jamie Hayter on it yet. So we're fixing that now. Also, I was installing my disc of 2K18 I picked up from Joe Dabrowski's House of Fun yes. booth at WrestleMania. <laughs> I don't know anything about this game, so Riz, I, I don't know what I'm getting into or if I'll have time. I haven't played 2K24 since the week it came out at this point. So we got listen, Riz, promise me, after I survive the month of May, okay, uh, we're playing I'm, video games. I, you and I are getting together and you're going to take me through some old WWE games, okay? Like, okay, let's we're, we're going to go through. I got, I got, I got a good one for you. Okay, uh, it is the best universe mode in WWE history. Which one is it? WWE thirteen. 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 Which one's thirteen? Is that the one 13, with Punk on it? I think that's the one with Orton on that's it. Twelve. Twelve. Oh, I, 12? I have twelve. So thirteen is Punk, I believe. Well, yeah, thirteen is uh, Punk. So that has like. An actual, and lucky we're talking about this, it has the draft. Mm. And it goes through like the superstar shakeup type situation where uh, two nights, Raw and SmackDown, DW maybe somewhere in there, but it's Raw and SmackDown. Uh, they're drafting mm. and they, they, ha- they, they face off against each other. And that winner gets a draft pick and it's randomized. And it's amazing. Mm. You know, I actually put up some WWE Battleground. I kind of like that one too. Uh, anyways, but that's not what it's about. I miss that game. So, yo, it was a fun game. I, I really enjoyed it. Like everybody else, kind of crapped on it, but it was like it was so kind of irreverent, and I love like the different kind of style. You know, I love it the got kinda... that weird moment. Like the I, I I remember playing that game when it first came out, and the first thing like, it was the first time I played the story mode, mm-hmm. uh, and the comic book style of uh stone cold and uh paul Heyman meeting and then embracing tenderly 
in in one of those scenes was very a very interesting choice. And WWE thirteens for the three sixty, and uh, it's on ten bucks at GameStop. So that, might, that might be an order at some point. Here. Yeah, yeah, I might grab grab a bunch of them here uh, at some point. Anyways, anyways, speaking yes. of which. Uh, so I know a- too much about wrestling video games. I'm AEW sorry. just happened. <clears throat> I have watched up through partially into the Claudio Bryan Cage match, which has been tre- tremendous so far. Uh, I did catch a little bit because my my app was kind of looping at the end there, so I know there was some action with Kenny Omega. Uh, so for those maybe who are not watching AEW, just start off with that first. What are the high points of AEW that maybe I didn't get to, especially what is going on with Kenny Omega? I know that Tony Khan is uh, got cut off and the EVPs are in charge tonight, so the Bucks were all over the place uh, tonight. So uh, I know that there's a bloody affair apparently just wrapping as we're recording now and live on air with uh, Willow and Sky Blue that I can't wait to watch while I'm editing this show. What's it going on? What's that? It, it just ended just a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So it was it was pretty gnarly. Not too not as much blood as we thought it would be, but there were some pretty gnarly spots. A there. Canadian level of blood is what we're saying. Um, not even. Oh, um, just a drop of I maple syrup. Maybe. But mm. it was called the Manitoba Massacre, so at setting a bar, I guess. Uh so I did I did see the the FTW match. With Jericho and um, and Shibata, where he mm-hmm. brought out a black bag of hockey pucks. Yes. <laughs> so um, there was some interesting, fun stuff in there. And I love Taz is getting so hot about what Jericho is doing to the lineage of his FTW championship. It's mm-hmm. like, he put his name on there. Nobody told me they were going to do that. Nobody tells me anything around here. And he just like flipped out for a while. I don't know if it was on the live or on the on the picture in picture or not, but it was, it was tremendous. Uh, so I'm kind of loving that. And I'm hoping it just like Taz gets in there and just kicks him in the nuts at one of these matches. So, uh, well, um, with the possible addition of big bill so mm, that, that might be, mm, yeah. Might be that's a right. That's right. Yeah. I was watching the big bill stuff, uh, uh, wrapped up, uh, some stuff from this. I watched uh, Saturday night in pieces. <laughs> So, <laughs> thankfully, I, I travel with Dutters, who is, is interested in seeing what's going on with wrestling, too. So, we are watching, uh, relatively when we can, uh, WWE Live. Uh, but the West Coast is weird to me, and I don't know what I'm getting in a hotel room uh, when I s- turn on at 8 o'clock and I expect to have WWE Raw on. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes you might, sometimes they air coast to coast, yes. like live, and, yeah. or sometimes you'll get that delay feed, so... That's great. And you just don't know what you're getting. I, yeah, I think I've had that with hotels. I'm like, wait, you know, I know I've been at somebody's residence in the West Coast and it's definitely on at eight o'clock on the USA. And then I go to a hotel and it's not. And I was like, and it was hilarious because I put it on and Kitty Aaron look at this and it's like, and there's like a stripper situation happening, a male stripper thing going on. And, and he's just like wheelbarrowing oh. this girl. And I think oh, it's, okay. I think it's like the that's farmer the, show or something. The- yeah, it's the Cowboys reality show that comes yeah. on right after Raw. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, this is not wrestling, but <laughs> it's kind of close. Uh, so that was kind of an experience. So uh, anyways, so what is the deal with Kenny Omega? Um, as far as I know, um, we, we don't know that much. Um, we know that he explained what was going on with him and that he's been hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he went to address the bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, But then we heard the coin drop. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah. And then classic, I I would say not necessarily classic, but you know, elite shenanigans, Jack Perry, Okada, the young bucks all attack Kenny. Okay. Until FTR comes out, and until FTR comes out um, a little bit towards the end, as you do. Okay, so we just had a little tease there. I wondered if I had any big because I, I tuned in and he was talking Japanese to uh, to somebody. Okada. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the, <laughs> for some reason, in my head, I thought Tanahashi showed up uh, for some reason. Uh, and like, then, and really then there was there was a little bit of a lead in too. They took up a little bit of time on Rampage too to address the whole Kenny um, to play out again with the Kenny situation, mm. but I'll let you, I'll let anybody for those who don't want, who doesn't want to hear any more about it. 
I'll just try to check out Rampage or at least wait for the social media clips to see what's going on um, with that too as well. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you. Um, so uh, we are we are two weeks out from Dynam Dynasty uh, and uh, kind of playing out till uh, double or nothing here. Uh, um, th I was really interested. Like people were really kind of ragging on how we just had Swerve come out and do a quote unquote nothing match to kick off his championship last week um and then you know and obviously we we you know kind of pushed for he spoke on saturday and uh you know we had the reveal of who's going to be facing a double or nothing tonight which is a great runaround by the way um you know i don't know how big we are on the on the on the christian cage as as the uh, contender here but man the story makes so much sense it, it makes sense, but there's also a little side story to it, too. At least I think there's a little bit of side story to it. Is this a Pacific um, Northwest side story you're about to tell us? Yeah, a little bit. You know, <laughs> I mean, there, there are certain members of the patriarchy that uh, that do have Northwest ties. I ah. mean, mm -hmm. as well, and not to reveal Christian's game plan or anything like that, um, uh, Nick Wayne did beat were for the Defy Championship. I mean. <gasps> mm. Oh, okay. All right. So, but uh, yeah, no, the, the, it, it, it is, I love that we flipped Swerve the face mm -hmm. and now he's, um, has to be accountable for all the terrible things that he's done. Right. Yeah. And, and Chris, yeah. And Christian mentioned that tonight um, with the Nick Wayne attack um, mm. at, um, uh, at the Buddy Wayne Academy, um, as well as what happened at All In in Wembley, you yeah, know, yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it's it's yeah, because it's it, it it's the it's the perfect he's the perfect heel. He's like because he's right, like he's absolutely right, you know, in this case. But then he says something about his daughter, and it goes completely off the rails, which is so Christian. So yeah, <laughs> but but that's Christian though, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm just like, and then it got weird. Thank you, Christian. Okay, here we go. Um, no, you, you know, I think that, that was right on for that stuff. I think there's some uh, pretty good matches here tonight, good showcase stuff tonight. It, it seemed like a lot of showcase matches. I don't know because they're stretching yeah. for three hours right now. Uh, um, well, I it, it just, it, for me, it wasn't didn't seem stretchy or it didn't seem long. It mm -hmm. actually seemed very quick-paced. Yeah. But, again, um, I, like, actually, when I saw – I think what was it i think it was i think it was brian um brian cage and, and claudio oh gosh. claudio yeah i was like looking at uh, i think more towards like when it was like 6 30 my time i'm like oh and then they, and then excalibur mentions oh we still have mariah may and serena and and Ooh. the kenny segment i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> Lots to look forward to. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Riz, have you been have you been keeping up? Are you watching tonight too? I was not watching tonight. Ah, uh, Riz has a yeah. I was. I have a I have a ritual on Wednesday where I uh, watch Dimension Twenty Junior Year. So, a little nerdy stuff, but yeah, I will probably watch it though. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. We'll, we're getting you caught up. This is your little preview here. So, well, yeah, it's. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's kind of like a um, showcase showcase of a dynamite, yeah. And then kind of for and further a little bit of story along. But other than that, like I said, I, I found it quick paced. But <laughs> yeah, no, I think they're doing really good with this, and I know they're getting topsy turvy because of all the NBA, NBA uh, uh, playoff situations. So mm -hmm. uh, I know they got to kind of play fast and loose with that. So uh, which you know messes with my schedule because I wanted to do this show an hour ago. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, you know, it, it, but that that's good. I think they've been doing great with things. Uh, it sounds like the ratings have been doing pretty good with them. Um, since apparently that's all that matters. This is according to Tony Khan. Um, oh, let's talk about my God. Actually, let's talk about Tony Khan and the neck brace. But first, I want to take a moment here to thank our friends that are supporting this show. And you're the reason why I'm making myself do the show on 11 p.m. here, uh, uh, you know, on a Wednesday night to get the show in. No, that's not the reason. Like, it's one of the reasons. Like, also, that's like kind of therapy for me. We've talked about this before. But you guys you deserve a damn show. We're going to give it to you. I know it's a day late, but I was on a plane at this time last night uh, on my way back. So, and and by the way, Ricky Stanicki is a fantastic movie that I watched on the plane on the way back. Is it? It is I've tremendous. Heard, uh... It is tremendous. I was laughing out loud at this thing. 
of Sorry My Neighbors on the Plane. Um, definitely, I think it's definitely worth If you like, um, I mean, it's in that vein of the, uh, you know, 40-year-old virgin kind of stuff, I guess, mm. uh, humor-wise. I, this is the closest thing I can think of, you know, um, uh, but it's it's good they got great people in there and it's um i mean it's it's if you're just up for a little bit of lewd humor you know um it, it, you're gonna appreciate it i think it just john cena is amazing uh at this thing so much range even in a britney spears costume uh but thank you for everybody that does support this show uh first of all our friends at the fan show level bo diggity wow i can't do it Woo. Like it was like very I bad. I was so that sad. One. We had a guest in the studio that didn't know what we were doing. <clears> so <throat> last year, last week. Uh, I know. Also, thank you to our friends. Uh, oh, yeah. Bodeggy, Team Hammerfist, and uh, the Tupac family. The Poppy Club Level Day, Prof Bob Podner, Spouse of Rooster Lawyer Fair at RoosterLawyerFair.com, Rats and Trends Code, Tini, Tony Kincaid, at the Pizza Club Level, Doc Remedy, The Riz, and Lance Fisher, and at the Manager Level, Bradley. You guys support the show, too, at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, uh, no, we're probably not. I don't think we're going to do a Patreon this week or next because uh, uh, May is one of the busiest months for me. So we're, our scheduling is a little weird and i need to kind of get at some stuff uh because i got some things to handle uh so but we're giving you a show at least and we'll see what else we can do here uh throughout the week too also in about two weeks or so i think we're going to do a pre-recorded episode again um because um i'm going on a family vacation guys i i'm going to take a vacation after Sorg's if, I, taking if vacation. I survive the next two Sorg's weeks vacation i'm going to take a, a I Honest know to God, that's a scary with the family thing. Yeah, a scary on thought. purpose. The work is not getting me to this location for a change. Sorg yes, I've gone is... to. Yes, I'm a person who's gone to two Disney World, Disney parks like on each uh, Disney park on each coast and a Six Flags in the last two months. But that's because it's work it gets me there, and I'm very nearby. The Six Flags is at the exit for my hotel, guys. Uh, but this <laughs> is I'm going. We're taking Mama Sorg. We're taking Mama Dutters. We are going down and should i tell you where we're going riz you want to know where we're going i want to know dollywood hell yeah (laughs) (laughs) hell yeah dollywood if dollywood is not a destination for you i you don't know what what it's about you don't know uh and you need to find out Definitely recommend the Delhi one. Uh, Dutters and I went two years ago, and we we're just like, this is the best, one of the best parks we've ever been to. So, uh, sorry, Six Flags. It was a little sad. Uh, but anyways, so uh, Tony Khan, or should I call him Tony Kaufman, um, got attacked on the show. And I love that. The day I, before. I love that. I love that. I will say something on the show. And Tony will prove me absolutely wrong. You know what, guys? I don't think ratings really matter to AEW. They got all this other stuff, a lot of other metrics. I don't think I think ratings are an exclusive uh, 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 metric to what's going on there. And Tony Khan, like two days later on Twitter, is like, ratings is the only thing that matters to AEW right now. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and didn't I say something about uh, Tony Khan's not going out there in a Pope mobile becoming part of the storyline? Yeah, then he gets power. Not only him. is he doing that, he brought his dad along, too. He brought his dad along, too. Yes. What did his dad do? I mean, after he got the uh, Meltzer driver, mm-hmm. I hate I hate that word, by whatever the way. Whatever they're called. It's the TK driver now. Yes. Yeah. Um, his dad comes out and, like, scowls at everybody in the ring, and then it goes... <sighs> It fades to black. Oh, I didn't realize that was his dad that came out. Okay, all right. Yeah. The guy with the really oh big gosh. mustache. Oh. The owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, Jaguars. no. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> and God bless Carly Bravo. <laughs> mm-hmm. And his reaction, he was like, oh, shit, God's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So he does this. And then we're all like, man, man, I hope he wears, everybody's like, I hope he wears the neck brace to the nfl draft the next day (laughs) and he freaking wears the neck brace to the nfl draft the next day and and every clip that i've seen nobody's like running down wrestling in this case and this is the thing wrestling's fucking cool right now right the fucking kansas city chiefs uh 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 quarterback 
was invo- involved in the damn storyline on Monday, right? Mm-hmm. So every interview, every spot, every callback to the to the shot across NFL Network, ESPN, uh, like, I saw it all across social media uh, la- late last week. Like, you know, they're chuckling about it, but it's not like offensive. You know what I mean? And and, and they're kind of selling it. You know, and and everybody's everybody's on board with this idea. They're not like, look at this clown over here, because very easily. Tony could be a laughing stock of the NFL ownership, right? Right. <laughs> In this with it with this, this definite kind of publicity stunt, you know. Um, but he shows up. You see him there on the draft. You see the shots. Um, my God, and I loved, and again, this is one of those things, like, I feel like, I, I, I thank you, Twitter, for proving me wrong, right? Because we're like, oh, Twitter's going to shit on how, how, how petty this is, and da, 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 da. And then it was like, no, this guy's a fucking wrestling god, good on him. You know what I mean? He fucking gets it. He's Tony, Co- he's Andy Kaufmaning this thing. Um, I hope he wears the neck brace for, like, three months, um, to everything, you know, straight up until preseason games. Let's do this. Uh, I love that they're like, he, I love the game that he is, he is, uh, uh, remotely producing this show from Jacksonville as if he's not actually there, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, and I don't know, maybe there's a real reason why he can't be at the shows anymore. And he's actually kind of playing with that. Right. Who knows? You know, um, I don't read the sheets anymore, so I don't know what's going on or what's supposedly going on anymore. Um, but man, I listen. I, Tony Khan is a goofy ass dude, but he's every one of us just with a bunch of money, uh, and and I think any one of us would be doing the same damn thing in that position, <laughs> and that's great. And he, he appreciates mm-hmm. it, and I see nothing but respect in everything he does for the wrestling. Uh, uh, you know, as much as he understands the wrestling world, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, he, and I, you love to see it. He's trying. He's trying real hard. Like that's all. That, 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 that's all. I I know. I. I'm not one of the biggest AEW fans in the world, but I I do give him props when mm-hmm. when it's due. That that was perfectly done for not just one night. He did it all three nights. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it was the seventh round they showed him. He still had a neck brace on. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only thing is, uh, and I kind of. It's kind of nitpicky, and I know other people do it too. But if you're wearing the neck brace, don't move your head. <laughs> Keep it straight. He just doesn't move. know how to sell it. No, I mean, and I get it. He, he was close. He was close to the TV. The TV was like in the corner over there, so he had to look over to the side just to mm-hmm. make sure he's on mm-hmm. the TV and look back. But. Yeah, I mean, I also heard that on like a podcast. I was like, "This, it's still, it's a really nitpicky type situation." Sure, but, sure, but it's still, a, yeah, it, is, it is kind of a nitpicky thing. Um, I think what it was is the filming, or mm. not the filming, but um, he had it on even during the um, parking lot brawl between Chuck Taylor and um, Trent Barretta. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think there's also like crowd footage of him. With the neck brace on, doing the dance with Daniel Garcia. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I, I, man, damn it. That is... Yeah, it would it would be us if we were. We yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, it absolutely. would it would definitely be us if we had money and the ability to to take a move like that. Yes. Yes. Um. No. All all hail Tony Khan. Thank you for saving wrestling <laughs> and and doing God this. Bless. God bless Tony Khan. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Um, no, I, I no, I go ahead. I was about to say, but unfortunately, with the thing about it is, whenever AEW sometimes takes two steps forward, there's always the unfortunate thing where it are, be are you one step. Back. Are you going to mention the Harvey Weinstein of wrestling? I, <laughs> hey, you <laughs> been, I, <laughs> I mean, I yeah. was going to leave it alone and leave it like that, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it, well, he recalled the WWE the Harvey Weinstein of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sometimes there's like, sometimes he, you get, you, he has to pull back sometimes. And I mean, there's those moments where. He's yeah. not wrong, but you know, no. he's not, but, but like, still, they're not supposedly still, there anymore. It's not a good and look. Also, it's like, 
Yeah, yeah. And it's not like you don't have guys there that have N- NDAs as well. Rumors have NDAs as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just no, and 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 again, I. <laughs> And again, when you have somebody with this much money, they're on another um, set of rules than any of us, right? In awareness, in a sense, I would so, say, but yeah. it, it, that's not a justification. Kind of like... Again, not a justification, but a reason. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, he's not living on the same plane of existence as the rest of us. Uh, that that to know that that is what, what probably is something he should not say. What are you talking about? Has that always been there, Sorg? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I I see what he's talking about. Nothing yeah, happening. yeah. Th- There's nothing <laughs> happening here. Uh, oh, it changed. Let's it just, actually just changed. Let's just talk okay. about wrestling. Let's just I talk about wrestling. Crazy. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. Anyways, I was worried that's going to be Raphael next, but go ahead. Um. No, I only have two. Okay. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out after this. Um. Oh, there you go. That attacks on Vince, not the company. Which, yeah, that's true. But he yeah. called it. He called WWE. Yes. The Harvey Weinstein of professional wrestling. Yes, I think. He didn't that, say Vince. I think that is a bridge too far. Um, I think if he, I think if he said Vince, that'd be more slanderous or something. So, yeah. um, you know, ah, they're, they're oh no, no, it fell. Um. But either way, I think it's a net positive for uh, what they were doing there, and it got some mainstream buzz over it, and hopefully more mm-hmm. than those comments. So, but also, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to a certain point, you can go to. Uh, I'm sure if Matt Carlin's was here, uh, he says no, we should take them to task about what's going on over there. You know, uh, everything's raw, raw, and hey, and look at what Paul's doing. It's Paul's world now, but it's still a company that did. Um, um, tolerate cover up something with whatever this is and we'll find out and we'll find out there's going to be litigation and we'll find out what's what's really going on here um and it's looking worse and worse every day from the things i'm seeing um the other con i guess we'll shift here because this news did happen and this is the businesses i i did see that um the uh, what, what's what, what's 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 the con's name that's in wwe i can't remember nick, nick con so I, I did see an article that Nikon has sold all of his shares in TKO and is uh, is rumored to be or has been named in one of the lawsuits. He, um, there he hasn't been named. They were just saying that um, it was corporate officer or corporate executive such and such and such, which rumored to be Nikon. Um, and then as far as from my understanding, um, his shares have been up for sale for quite a few months now. So it's nothing new. Right. I think it, it sounds like it may just be cashing in from all the good business he's done in the last uh in the last bit. Uh so and okay, and, 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 and a day ago there's a YouTube video letting us know that Vince and Nick still have plenty of stock. So, you know, whatever that means, I don't know. Well, this is a wrestling show, I don't know why we're talking about stock markets. Uh but uh but hey, you know, they are here to make the money. And uh, that's what they're going to do. And speaking of making big money moves, um, something happened on Friday and Monday. The draft? <laughs> the draft, you say? You're the alluding draft. to, perhaps? Well, let's talk about the draft. But first, I want to give a shout out. Let's go to IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great wrestle action over there. Uh, part of that is going to be the Big League Pro that is debuting this weekend. Uh, we're not going live with it yet. Uh, it's a, since it's a new promotion, we're kind of getting everything under uh, what's going on with Big League Pro here. But it will be on IndieWrestling.us, just like our other Erie promotions have been in the past. Uh, so very excited to see what John McChesney and the crew is uh, doing up there for May the 4th be with you. Clever name. Uh, so <laughs> I wonder what day of the month it's on. And, uh, and, of course, a lot of action here from the last month, including RWA, VCW, Prospect Pro Wrestling, and a lot of the back catalog. A lot of uh, a lot of the old catalog is going up uh, on YouTube as well. It's been timed down and cleaned out of the vault. 
under the paywall, and you guys can view it. A lot of it's premiering, a lot of some, some of the West Virginia wrestling and some of the names that you may see all over the place. So go check that out, IndieWrestling.us, and if you'd like to, subscribe to us on YouTube uh, for uh, the shows and the live streams for a lot of those, as well as IndieWrestling.network with a lot of the back catalog, including some of the original content that we have, including Duke and Doe's easy, uh, Hardcore Memories, talking about the good old days of ECW, uh, as well as uh, Wrestle with Rigatoni, Women's with Waffles, Women's with Waffles, Waffles with Women's, something like that. Uh, with all things that people told me I need to resurrect and do new editions yes. of. <laughs> yes. We'll find some bandwidth for that in the near future. Hell, I got a big Frost and Benjamin interview from about three years ago. I never edited. So maybe we'll get to that and put it on YouTube. Who knows? So go check out everything. IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great things happen there. Thursday Night Fights this week. Go check that out live. So, drafty draft? Is there a draft in here? The actual draft that mattered last week? I appreciate Listen. Um, God, <laughs> what? God bless Corey Graves mm-hmm. for trying mm-hmm. to put over this inane concept of this draft. And I've, I've been less pissed about this draft than I ever have been. I've been like, cool, it's a draft. Let's go. But the fact that everybody needs to draft their person in, like there's this big concept of drafting your person back to your company to make sure it didn't get drafted somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Made a lot of nonsense happen. Okay. Um, well, well, there not only that, but there was just like there was a little bit of change to it too. Okay. Um, it didn't seem as chaotic. Like all the champions were protected. Mm-hmm. Um, factions and tag teams were put to were remained together, so it didn't seem as chaotic. Yes. There was there was a point in the draft on Monday where my brain exploded and they're trying so hard they were trying so hard and it was i think round one round one or two where smackdown got three people and then raw got the lwo uh i believe imperium or, was LW, that was the first round, actually. Oh, that was the first round where they got that was like the first round seven um, draft pe- like seven. No, it wasn't. Wrestlers. Um, no, I think it was because it was Gunther, um, Gunther and Ludwig, L- Ludwig, Gunther and Ludwig Imperium. They also got Damage Control. They got Damage Control. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Yeah, I think Damage Control was in the one with. Uh, Okay, now I'm just going to scroll until I find it because now I'm really interested because <laughs> I know they have it and I kind of just was like, what the hell is happening here? Yeah, because right off the bat, that was the first round. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, But yeah, it was one of those weird things where it felt like it, it felt like WWE was uh, Raw was, was trying to fill in three hours, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were picking up all these res- all these factions one of one of, one of which had a person that's not in the faction anymore um <clears throat> with uh yeah, what's they, his... yeah carlito came with the yeah. lwo right yeah they're, they're like and carlito as well it's like oh yeah like he just got like 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 under the under the draft line or something he ran in with them right so um I, yeah, uh, so here's, because there was a lot of, like, you know, kind of people uh, analysis, oh, what's Raw going to be like and stuff. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't doesn't care. matter. I don't care who's on which show. I want to see what you do with them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't care until you actually see. Uh, there was somebody pointed out. This was a great one. Uh, I need to see who I sent this to. Um, s- somebody had pointed out that... Um, there was a fellow, uh, Odyssey Jones was apparently mm-hmm. uh, drafted. God, I can't find it now. He was drafted last year to Raw. Never showed up on Raw. He was drafted this year to Raw. They misspelled his name. Now, was that on purpose? 
I don't. Or do you think they're actually just going to call him? I think he's going to be odd to see, and it's the return of the oddities, ladies and gentlemen. You know you want it. You know you want it. Everybody they comes did to John Ted to bad. They they did John Ted to bad. I'm pick, sorry. Pick up all the juggalos and roll. They did earthquake bad. Everybody come see the greatest show. Earthquake should not be put in a mask sword. Mm. But I hope he does good. <laughs> yes, like, absolutely. Like I actually have seen like maybe one or two matches with Odyssey Jones. Sure. And each time. And this was this was more of a NXT crowd. NXT ate him up. Like a, a, NXT was like the, the crowd was for Odyssey Jones. Mm-hmm. And so how they're going to turn him into into a raw superstar, I don't want to see what happens there. Out of anybody in that draft, I want to see what they do with him. Because we know what Braun Breaker can do. We know what Blair Blair Davenport can do. We we know what Ty, or Tyre Valkyrie can do. Mm-hmm. Odyssey Jones is a little bit of a curveball in that. Mm-hmm. And also Dijak's there too. Also Dijak. I'll be looking. So we're looking forward to that. Um, no, I you know I'm excited to see this. this is, NXT's been kind of rocking lately. Um, mm-hmm. It's time to bring some people up. So um, yeah. yeah, and it's like um, also with the X factor of having Kiana James. Like you've seen her on NXT, but not a lot of mainstream fans are exposed to NXT. Yeah. So um, be interesting to see that as well, um, and then to make that shift with all those people, especially someone like Kiana James with an integral part of, as I'm going to segue to NXT again, um, they, uh, Ava just announced um, how the um, women's North American championship is going to be determined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, how's that happening? Um, there's going to be a combine going back into what? the athletic. <laughs> Which is... Yeah, there's going to be... There's gonna be what? <laughs> but, yes, there's very gonna be random. A combine. Yeah, like I said, this is really going to be like college type, college athlete type off. Which um, they so did before be a, the draft. Before, yeah, they're right. Um, so they're going to be a combine to narrow it down to narrow it down to twelve women. Out of those twelve women, there's going to be qualifying matches, and those final six will um, be part of the ladder match, much like the original men's um, North American title will be uh, determined in a ladder match at um, NXT Battleground. Okay. It's a I like lot. It. I know. It's a lot to okay. process. <laughs> Hold on. I got a whiteboard here. Um, I, I, geez, geez. This is where we need Matt with his khakis and the board again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look, my hair got fussed just thinking about that. Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, athletic, so an athletic combine, narrow it down to 12 women. Out of those 12 women, they're going to be qualifying matches. And those six women out of those 12 women who win are in the ladder match. I, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I want you. Should I catch up with the last three weeks of NXT? Four weeks of NXT, by the way? Um, no. Or should I just, just fast forward to spring break in and just do that? Spring yeah. break in's a good reset. I mean, a little bit. It's, oh, um, I don't know what they're setting up with Trick Williams. Mm. And yeah, that. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happening there. Okay. Because I, what, what is it, happening it there feels, that we understand? Tell me what's happening. Um, Lash Legend came out with a, a manila envelope and s- stated that uh, in that envelope can crush his career. God. What's up, mystery handshakes and, and envelopes lately? Jeez. I just... I, Remember back in TNA mm-hmm. where they did that whole um, AJ Styles angle with the baby? 
what? Oh, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, this. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is, what? But and they it, don't need to do just, this. It just screams. It also screams like Seth Rollins and Aaliyah and Ray. That whole mystery in love thing too. Yeah. Mm. They don't need to do this. <laughs> like, if it's gonna be, uh, if if they're building like, No I Am versus Trick. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that match. Don't need to spice it up with with mind games that could ruin a wrestler's career. Mm-hmm. And when, and whenever there are allegations out where there's literally ruining people in wrestling's careers. You don't know what you don't know what it is. You know, it could be he had a gambling problem at Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know. You know, it it's could Dave, be Dave and Buster's first of all. Okay. You, you, I, yeah, okay. it's Dave and Buster's, not Chuck E. Cheese. Guys, did you see? I saw this on TikTok. Somebody that um, they d- thanks to Leap Year, they just supported their ninth birthday. Uh, mm-hmm. So what was nine times four? Whatever that is. Uh, thirty-six. Thirty-six. So so a relative thirty-six year old uh, uh, got to have their birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. Ooh, they have the Johnny Gargano versus Bronson Reed matchup. Mm. On that speed. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, speed is an interesting concept. I watched the first couple of matches on there. I just keep forgetting it happens. Mm. Anyways, um, yes? Yeah, and they, and they I believe it was last, this past week, they crowned the speed champion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nice, nice. It's an interesting concept. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, It's going to be an w- interesting trivia, Mark in the near future i'm sure so yeah and so yeah like you were mentioning before we're going to see how all these um new entities play out as far as the as far as the main roster Mm -hmm. and (laughs) i mean they're even like meshing in with new people like with the old guys the old people that were not drafted quote unquote Mm -hmm. because i know nxt just had uh the oc come in like mm-hmm. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson and fought against uh Axiom and Axiom and Breaker. yeah. And then as mentioning before with the um women's North American championship, and speaking of the OC, um uh, my chin just put or Mia Yim just put her her hat in into that as well. Mm, that could be fun. That could be mm-hmm. fun. Um, and of course there is Ivar in there too. <laughs> what? Yeah, you didn't know Ivar's been in NXT now? Yeah, Ivar's been uh again having throwing his hat into the North American title scene with uh, yeah. Josh Briggs. Is that right? Josh Briggs. Obafemi too. Obafemi, yeah. Hmm. Well well, uh this weekend uh we are going to be uh treated to I think it's an afternoon uh pay per view this uh with Backlash in France. Okay. Backlash. Y'all are going to be treated to an afternoon one. <laughs> oh, oh we'll yeah. Do, we'll do the time zone math here right after this. Hold on a second. I got to fix this first. After this break, and you are going to listen on both feeds to Keith Hot catching up with what's up with Top Rope Tabletop that's going live this Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern time here in the Sorgatron Media Studios. We'll be right back after this. Hello everyone, Dungeon Master Bearcat Keith Hod here, and previously on Top Rope Tabletop, Shadowclaw obtained all the gems of fate thanks to Eritros, the rebellion leader against the Mind Flayer menace in Waterdeep. The gang decides to help the resistance and finds themselves in the underbelly of Waterdeep. They find an airship that is a ticket to infiltrating the City of Shadow, but guarding it is also a golden dragon fused with the outer brain of the Mind Flayers. This will be their toughest challenge to date. Good luck, Shadowclaw. You're gonna need it. (laughs) We'll see you all Friday, May 3rd, 7 o'clock. See you soon.
they work so well together, they work in tandem. The reigning and defending Wayward Sons are cut from the championship wall. I believe less than a month ago, get that momentum going. So gritty. This is his start in professional wrestling. Oh, big thinking, big neck breaker. So, yeah, I believe it's had enough. Getting a little frustrated. Things are starting to break down here. AJ, oh God, unanticipating that shot. And look at his tag team cohesion. For Quite an eccentric individual as well. He gets a, the Gavin Jacobs. Oh, but he's not gonna. The muscles. Ooh, chin breaker by. But has a real sense of urgency here. Big There's spine bust. Thinking the cutter hits it. Oh, and KC now. And that was nasty impact. Got to say by Gavin Jacobs, but it was necessary. Rumble payoff. It does. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Maybe not. Let's talk about sour grapes. Afternoon in McMacken. is already on a roll made to win tonight but as i said wrestling with a lot of big time matches poke can do oh it's to tie up a calf momentum is such a trademark here as oh. there, how to maximize oh. the okay, christopher now this number blatant interference in front of the official i am restarting the match thank you thank you God. what oh, was this from a clothesline that's another and Paul take it out, kid! Called enough! Oh wow! Misdirection from the count! Oh now! Ooh, double knees right there! Grabs a hold! Ooh! Suplex there! Inspector! There's the running knee strike! So seemingly not done! Gonna put more of a beat down! They have hit the ring! To even the odds! I mean, I don't know how the hell this matchup got restarted, but I know one thing for sure. back and I'm considering bad decisions again so let's get back into it backlash is this weekend and headlined in France where in France you're gonna have two good old Georgia boys square off for the WWE title uh of course AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes um so side note I watched a video that Chewy sent a care package to Pharaoh with a Chewy champion belt for Pharaoh. No. I sent it to my mother for dog things. Um, but then I had explained them to the WWE Champions dog. Uh, but anyways, uh, so I it seems a little bit out of nowhere, but I think it would I think it's gonna be tremendous. I think it's a first time match if I'm not mistaken, right? That they've been putting over? Correct. Yes. Yes. Uh this is I mean this is this is placeholder for Cody. You know what I mean? Like there's gonna be no threat until he gets to SummerSlam. Easy. Right. Um, so if memory serves me correctly, and this is my geekiness, um, just kind of pointed out there, um, these are the only two men, at least as far as I know, um, who have both held uh, the WWE title and the NWA world title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Someone quote me if I'm wrong or not. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like maybe also no. I Cody didn't. Do, Cody didn't hold a TNA title, did he? Impact. Title? No. Okay. No. no. Okay. No, just the um, as I mentioned, just this title and then the NWA World Title. And they also have each, I believe, held an, a, a New Japan title. Didn't Cody have the U.S. T- title? Yes. Um, and yes, a- he did. A- a- Does he beat uh, what's his face? Um... Hold on. Juice. This department working. <laughs> Say Deuce? Juice. Juice. Oh, Juice Robinson. Juice. Yes. Yeah. Juice Robinson. Yeah. Yes. So um you got uh the Kobe, Kabuki Warriors, which still feels like a overly um cultural name for them. Uh I guess Jade and Bianca. So I'm for it. So mm-hmm. put it on them. It, 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 do do we roll with this and then there's a uh a, a Jade turn? You think down the line? Not as of yet. Well, um, down the there, line, there... you know. Down, the, down line, the line, yes, but not right now. Um, I think. Well, as we saw at the Rumble, and then what we um, what we were mentioning um, mm. just a little bit ago, Nia just got drafted to SmackDown, so you still got that loose end with Nia there. Yes, that's before, true. That before true. that turn. But mm-hmm. in the meantime, that is like two muscly ladies that are going to throw around some uh, some kabuki warriors it feels like i feel like they're going to have some fun with that yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> they certainly will yes do uh, they put the title on her i think they could i think they could especially especially being backed up by bianca that has a history of uh title mm-hmm. title uh contention i wouldn't I, I would wait until i would wait until a bit, don't take this the wrong way with backlash i would wait until a bigger pay-per-view to do that though uh how big is this uh arena in france um, let me take a look. And also, how do we classify big pay per views anymore when they're traveling around, selling out massive places, uh, and they're doing about like what are we up to like five or six WrestleMania size venues at this point? Um, so uh, I don't know. I can see them doing it. Every pay per view is now WrestleMania. Yes. Every day is WrestleMania. Okay? Every day is WrestleMania. Yes. Do every the day moves. you wake up, it's WrestleMania. Do the moves. Uh, say don't the DM Vince. Don't don't DM Vince anymore. But don't DM Vince. Yeah. Um, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens against Solo and Tama. This has been interesting. I'm glad that KO and uh, and uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm glad RKO. No, wait, are they RKO? Is that what they've been going by? They will be RKO tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I mean, not tomorrow night, but uh, this R- Friday night. Yeah, it's the RKO show, isn't show. it? Um, yes. No, I, I, I'm so glad that their 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 tiff at WrestleMania uh, is is not you know did not break up the <laughs> band because I think they've been uh, a, a wonderful buddy. Uh, uh, I think Randy just wants partners he can have fun with at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And I will always remember, I love that he's with Orton, and, and I, I, I love he's with Owens. And I remember, I can't remember if they were feuding or teaming at the time before, but I remember him lamenting about how he's jealous of Kevin Owens because he can eat whatever he wants, and he decided that he needs to go out in his underwear, so he needs to be in good shape. Uh, so, <laughs> um, and I think that's what builds their their, their relationship. So uh, first big uh, high-level thing for Tomatonga. Uh, he'll mm-hmm. be fine. He'll be fine. He'll so be fine. I love it. Um, and that arena, um, holds a max capacity of, I'd say about 16,000. 16,000. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. But it's in France and we'll have a France based SmackDown this week as well. I'm sure that, that will be pre-taped. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, um, and then as well, there is a a backlash kickoff show what? Um, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> All <laughs> or right, on... let's translate this for the West Coasters out there. 7 a.m. <laughs> 7 a.m. You're watching backlash. <sighs> well, not backlash. Um, the backlash kickoff event on that Friday. Because you gotta watch the backlash kickoff event, of course, with your with your the pay per view itself. But the pay-per-view itself on Saturday, it's going to be Brunch and Backlash Ooh. at 10 a.m. Ooh, Brunch and Backlash. I hope somebody's doing that event at a cantina or something. Man, if I own a venue, 
I'd be I'd be rolling with that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, that's the Lariat Bar here in the White Center um, area of Seattle. They are actually airing Backlash. Nice. I like that. That's coming back. Like the Tom's Watch Bars are a thing. In in in, I think Dave and Buster's are carrying WWE again, which is like fantastic since it's like it's not even a sixty dollar pay per view. It's like ah no, I just it's not about I I need to pay you know don't want to spend the ten dollars to watch this thing five dollars to watch this thing. I just want to watch it with people. Like I love that. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's tremendous. Uh, we, we, we should also mention there's a three way for the, uh, other women's championship, uh, Bailey, Naomi and Tiffany Stratton in a three way. That'd be good. Tiffy yes. time, baby. And there is also, um, for the world heavyweight championship, there's oh, hey. Damian Priest versus Jay Uso. Below the fold. Okay. Uh, so no, that should be good too. I'm um, glad to see Jay still in the title picture. I was thinking about this too when we were talking about Swerve, kind of like answering for his sins before he kind of turned face. Like I feel like Jay went through that process too, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I thought that I, I love that. Like we don't just like forgive people when they become fan favorites, you know? Um, it's like yeah, but you did this thing. It's it's like it's like my grandmother in law. She never forgot what Edge and Ric Flair did. And now that's like a storyline. No matter how much they were getting cheered. So it looks like a good show. Good classic WWE show. Uh, I'm interested to see how it uh, turns out here. So don't mind, nobody send me what happened before Sunday night, please. <laughs> so <laughs> as I'm recovering from God knows what I'm going to do that day. Uh, shout out to our friends again. Taco Mania. Not, not anything to do with IndieWrestling.us, but our friends Taco Mania. Um, our friends enjoy wrestling. Uh, will be at Taco Mania if you're in the Pittsburgh area. It is that cool thing where they it's like in the intersection. They set up a ring, and there's a beer fest around it. It's really tremendous, uh, and they have taco food trucks and everything like that. So, um, you know, something I know happens uh, uh, quite often, from my understanding, in Chicago at least. I know our friend, uh, uh, the, forma, the former DJ Z, um, uh, yeah, right. Walking Wild, I know, did a lot of those kind of lucha shows in in the, in the street kind of thing, and, I, and I'm sure they have a few other places too. Um, but uh, it's really cool that they're they're getting to do that. I think it's Cinco, Cinco de Mayo they're doing that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they did it later in the season last year, if I'm not mistaken. They did but, in August. It's what I thought. I, it, it felt like it was a lot sooner than expected. Because it's a lot warmer. Yeah, and also shout out to Enjoy. <laughs> Um, they are doing, um, and this is a, a venue. I don't, I don't know, Tina, if you're familiar with this, and we, I'm sure we've talked about it in the past. Uh, Stage AE, which is where NXT and Ring of Honor previously would have been, um, you know, back in the day, right, you know, in the shadow of uh, Heinz Field. I don't, I don't care what the name is now, where the Steelers play. Um, uh, Enjoy Wrestling is moving to Stage AE for their next yes. show, Immaculate. And of course, Edith Surreal, Edith Surreal is the poster girl for that one. Their champion. Um, so uh, I last got to see Edith. We actually got to film uh, Edith uh, defending the Enjoy Championship against Reese Hayes out in uh, Philadelphia for the 880 show. So uh, excited to see that. Uh, already have tickets. Don't book me. Uh, in fact, I'm getting. I'm. <laughs> I'm coming. Going to drive in early from Michigan to make the show. Uh, I'm excited about this. So um, I like it because it's. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of promotions have been doing a lot of cool new things in the city, and I think that's really important for Pittsburgh wrestling. And uh, that I have been, I have been, God, lamenting for people for years to do, and I'm, I'm glad to see that enjoys doing some something really cool there, and and putting something on a literal big stage. Um, here in the city like this. I mean, it's going to get a lot of attention. It's going to change the game a little bit, I think. So, um, and uh, yeah, look forward to that. And some good things happening here in the Pittsburgh area. But it's always good things happen in Pittsburgh area. I'm sad I can't make Wrestle Rex because I'm going to be doing another show. So <laughs> that's also another fun experience. But anywho, um, what do we do now? Hey, want to shout out to our friends uh, at Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, New York City style. Yins are made. Beach View, Carnegie, East End, North Hills. Hey, if you're going to Taco Mania, they're right across the, the, the way from there. If you're getting tired of the taco stands throughout the afternoon as you're drinking your beer samples, um, go get yourself a slice. Soak it up with some uh, nice bready dough. 
uh, and pepperoni. So thank you to them for supporting the show well over the decade. Let's catch up with the guys tonight because apparently they were following my uh, adventures over to uh, uh, WrestleMania in Philadelphia earlier in the month. And it's one of the guys I usually don't get to see because I'm not usually in on Wednesday nights because we do the show on Tuesdays. Um, so it was good to catch up with them. Up with them. Check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com, and thank them for supporting the show. Friends, it's time to find out what did we learn from wrestling this week. I learned, I learned, I wore my uh, Kaiju Big Battle shirt uh, from the show I attended this month um, to, the, uh, to my travels. And there was a guy late last night, the train from the terminal was so full. And there's a dude in a wheelchair and I was so excited to see a Kaiju Big Battle shirt. That is the last thing I thought I would have got a reaction from in the airport, in an airport coming back from uh, L.A. So I, I just that was a really cool connection that happened last night. I hope it made, you know, definitely brighten the dude up that was stuck in this airport tra <laughs> people traffic hellscape uh, that we were all in. So. Uh, that, that's what I learned. Uh, you never know what, what's going to kind of connect with people. And, you know, I mean, you, I mean, Riz, you've seen the pictures on the trips. I'm usually grabbing, like, I, I think I wore a two P old school two PW shirt to six flags defy, you know, I'm just like, you know, trying to bring those old promotion shirts, uh, with me when I'm traveling around. Cause who knows, right? Um, somebody's going to know, somebody's going to know, somebody's going to ask questions. Somebody's going to ask about it. You're going to connect with somebody you didn't think about, you know? Um, you know, I think I've gotten a few nods when I've seen other people with Defy shirts in, in, in the LA area for sure. Uh, for instance. So, uh, so yeah, you never know. You never know who you're going to run into out there as you're traveling around. So who wants to go next? I shall go. Riz shall go. I learned that today is there are two very important things that happen in wrestling history today this day in history um one was the one of the best steiner promos in history oh no the steiner math promo mm -hmm. go check it out it's amazing i don't think there and there wasn't even a match at that at that at that pay-per-view with him in it i don't think i don't think he had actually he was actually in that match anymore uh and the second thing, and I didn't know this until I saw it online. Today, uh, today a couple of years ago, John Cena, America's own John Cena, after winning, I think he might have been against like Randy Orton or something, got up on the announce table and said that <laughs> they have comp they have compromised to a permanent end Osama bin Laden with the biggest pop in the world fireworks started to go off at the end and it was one of those things where it's like why is John Cena doing this mm -hmm. but then you realize why shouldn't John Cena do that he's the Hulk Hogan of the 2000s right so Hulk why, Hogan, why not Hulk Hogan wishes he had that power like Hulk Hogan wishes something happened on his run. Speaking of Hulk Hogan, I <laughs> oh learned, God, you see the interview? I learned that the Seven Hundred Club still is a thing. <laughs> oh God! Oh boy, some of the quotes that pulled from that were pretty incredible. Um, I pulled. I, I, I want to pull up one that please, I please. I'll tell you what. You go research department on that while we wait. While yeah. we hear Tina, what Tina has learned before we go down this rat hole. Um, just pretty, I, I can only come up with one thing and is boo on Jay Uso for not letting Braun Strowman do the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as, as you're aware, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, um, handed Logan Paul his three Super Bowl rings mm -hmm. and Braun Strowman was about to chat Patrick. But she mm -hmm. stopped him, and I'm kind of sad. I love, there, there was no way he, they were going to touch him. I love that JD got so hard by those <laughs> rings that he was selling it and tapping out. Um, do you recall seeing like um when he 
put his when he took the towel off his face, the big huge leg purple bruising. No. Uh. <laughs> Did he oh, okay. get him? Did he for real get him? I don't know. I don't <laughs> I don't know if it was like makeup. Yeah. Yeah. But there was like pretty the, oh, made the inference no. that it was like very purple mm-hmm. bruising. Wow. And they showed it they showed another picture of him where you can see like the the like Tina said, you can see like the little divots of the of actual the gem. gems yeah. in his skin. That's <sighs> that's incredible. In the bruise. I yeah, man, there's a fucking art form when they do this right like this, you know. Um oh, one more thing. And fuck Grayson Waller for shitting on the bingle. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh man. That's right. They were in your old backyard, weren't they? <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Wrestling's in a good place, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what day we talk about it, uh, happy to be here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tina Keys, for hanging oh out goodness. with us he tonight. Called him a, he called Certainly. himself a um, If I could, just really quickly, and yes. I'll probably do it next week as well. Defy is um, holding their May show, um, streaming it live on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, the main event is going to be the bad boy Joey Janela versus Nick Wayne um, in a 60-minute Ironman match. And uh, we also have, for the Defy World Championship, uh, Kenta versus Brian Keith. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I was trying to pull up Remix to see what they've been doing over there lately. Uh, so, uh, But, no, that's awesome. Also, uh, it, it will shout out again. Enjoy has their shows. Uh, the Odyssey uh, is coming up. I think they, Mikey, Mikey Montgomery and Lee Moriarty was a big match from last Thursday, I believe. So I have not had a chance to uh, catch up with that. Uh, so, but as I've told Scotty, I do not watch your program cause I'd rather be there in person, <laughs> which is a, 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 that's a me problem. Uh, but I, I'm going to have to break that role to go see, uh, Mikey and, um, and, uh, and, uh, Lee go at it here. So, oh, also bad one has learned that AEW is selling a Nyla shirt where the proceeds go to LBGT. QIA place in Oklahoma. Fuck yeah. Go yeah. fucking go for it, AEW. Uh uh, uh Riz, uh, uh before we get your outro, uh you you have some quotes to share. So the the main one. Hmm. Uh the one that got a lot of uh, a, a lot of things and I think he mentioned this before too. Uh was this text me- was this text messages oh, oh no. two two days after Roddy Piper died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm go- I'm just I'm just loving you, my brother. Just walking with Jesus, walking with Jesus, loving you, my brother. And the best part was he he starts to cry during this, and he says he would never have said that if he were re- if he was here. I'm like, yeah. He probably didn't say that at all. Yeah, man, your phone's got um, hacked. Your phone's got hacked, man. So let's see. There was another one uh, where he called himself a meat a meat suit filled with the spirit of Christ. I mean, you know, I get that vibe. I mean, yeah, but it's weird to say out loud on a, on a TV show. And then uh, I think he started talking about Andre at one point where. He said he couldn't Use eat a fork with, a fork, yeah, and with knife. a fork and knife. I'm like, what? <sighs> this, this is weird. Mm-hmm. There's something about the 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 people of that era that I I man, something happened to them. I don't know if it was the roids. I don't know what it was, but they just start losing it. He's but, in. He's. It's his ego. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's he's. It, uh, though. He was sued. I mean, wasn't he? Like, he sued a company and got millions of dollars uh, because of what he did. That, that was, and that was also backed by somebody else who had an axe to grind with that company. So, also, but that's true. a whole other thing. Riz, thank you so much for joining us. You'll be come running. Home the head, come home and the headband comes off the bald head, and you know it's just Terry. And you know it's just Riz, and the Riz is going to be running his ass off at the Pittsburgh Marathon this weekend. We've been sharing the uh, uh, Katie's link for uh, raising money for 412 Thrive, a great organization uh, that uh, helps uh, 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 breast cancer survivors um, with with 
stuff. I don't know. Katie says it better than I do, anyways. Uh, but uh, no, go support that, and uh, and we'll see who's out there running. Um, Riz, at the very least, I want to come down and support you guys. So, and, no. and who knows if I'll be in line with you. I don't even know how relays work. Somebody needs to explain this to me. I've never been to a marathon ever. So, <laughs> so whoa. Well, at least participating. I've covered a couple. But anyways, but they had capes. Um, I, you get medals afterwards, so it's fine. You get medals? I'll get a medal? Do I have to pay for this? Is there no. an entry fee? Okay. I what am I doing? I'm Sorgatron. This is me. Uh at Sorgatron on the social medias. You can see our adventures uh from the last few weeks and then coming up here this month. Um I will be in uh of course Thursday night fights in New Kensington, uh Pennsylvania. I'm very excited. We're gonna be uh trying out some new people in new positions. Uh, uh video production positions, I should clarify. Um and uh uh and, and that one going to, is going to hr uh and also i will be in erie pennsylvania for big league pro wrestling uh up at the uh, sports center action sports center i believe it is up there uh the place that we've been doing wrestling up there just under a new banner and i'm very excited to see what uh a uh, uh, john mcchesney pro if you will uh will have in store for us a lot of our friends of the show up there including you know palace and arquette are a part of it and i think a lot of other uh, familiar faces are going to be a part of this show as well so very excited to see what's going on there and of course i will will be uh, having two beers in my hand uh, or maybe just seltzers at Taco Mania and uh, looking for a ride home on uh, Sunday, one way or another. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.